All right, so today we're going to start with um, making a solution. And what's going to happen is I'm going to actually be physically doing this process in front of you. So it's up to you what you write down. Okay, I'm not going to put the steps up here. I'm going to talk through them. I'm going to show you them. Uh, but these steps are really important in the order that they go in. Okay, so just um, watch and follow along as I start making your solution. Uh, and you, you can write it down. I'm going to have you come up and look at a few things as I start making it. Uh, but this is what we're looking for here. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do, do to make our solution is we want to have a point for molar solution of salt water. And I need 100 milliliters of solution. Okay, so I need 100 milliliters of a solution that has a concentration of 0.4 molar. All right, so how do I go about solving for what I need or how many grams of salt I need in my solution? Um, Jake, can you give me the equation for molarity? Uh, moles of solute over liters of total solution. Moles per liters. And what out of this, what out of this equation do we have already? Yeah. We have molarity, right? 0.4, we have our concentration. And what else do we have? We have our volume, which is in milliliters right now. So what do we need to do to get it to liters? 0 0.100 liters. Okay, has this? We found our moles of sodium chloride. We're going to go from moles to grams. And this is just to tell me how many grams go into my solution. This is for me physically to be able to measure this out. Okay, I need this many grams. What's our molar mass of salt? Salt? 23. No, that's Earth sodium. 58.5. Okay, that's our molar mass of sodium chloride. Okay, salt is sodium and chloride. So 58.5 is our molar mass there. To find grams, we multiply across the top, divide by the whole bottom, and we get how many grams of salt? 2.34 grams. Okay, I thought you would say that, so it just happens that I have 2.34 grams of salt already measured. Good, C is concentration and V is volume. So sometimes you'll see it written like this, M1V1 equals M2V2, which would mean what? Molarity. Molarity. Okay, you'll see it written like that. I usually use C1V1 equals C2V2, um, but you can see it both ways. Essentially, we're going to be using molarity for those, so it doesn't really matter which way you write it. But it's concentration times volume equals concentration times volume. What do you think the ones and the twos have to do with it? Initial and final. So the ones are the initial, and these are final. Okay, so it's kind of a before and after. Okay, questions? All right, let's go ahead and try one here. Okay, so I have concentrated sulfuric acid, which is H2SO4, is equal to usually a 18.1 molar concentration. That's my stock solution. Okay, so concentrated sulfuric acid usually has 18.1 molar um, concentration. So I want to find the volume in milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid I will need to make 125 mils of a 0 0.10 molar solution. <clears throat> that was my email. Okay. Yeah. 125 milliliters of that.
So if I set up my equation C1 times V1 equals C2 times V2, what uh, variable here would we be solving for? V1. Good. If this is my stock solution right here, and this is my dilution, I'm going to go ahead and solve um, for V1, the volume of my stock solution. That's what I need. So what's the concentration of my stock solution? 18.1. I'm solving for V1. The concentration of my final solution needs to be 0 0.10. And the volume of my final solution needs to be 125 milliliters or 0.125 liters. What's the final answer need to be in? Milliliters. milliliters. That means we can leave our volume in milliliters. That's fine. As long as your units are consistent, you can use either one. This has to be the same on both sides. Okay, so to solve for that, I'm going to multiply on the right side 0.1 times, point, times 125. And that gives me, I believe, 1.0125. Yeah? Or the other way around? Oh, okay. The other way around, sorry. Apparently, I don't do math. <laughs> okay? And that's going to equal 18.1 times V1. Okay, how do I get V1 by itself? Divide by 18.1. Good. So that means the volume of my stock solution that I need is 0.691 milliliters. That's not what you got? Or it is what you got? Okay, good. I got a funny look. You can do on your own. So Oops, 175, sorry. of a 1.6 molar solution LICL to 1.0 liters. What is the concentration of the new solution? Why higher? Oh, because they're inversely related. Oh, yeah. Okay. Do the math, see what you think. Oh, wait. Oh. I'm taking a stock solution or a solution of 1.6 molar and I'm adding a lot of water to it. Okay, do you think our concentration is going to be higher or lower? Lower. Should be lower. Wait, is that a 6 or a 0? It's a 1.6. Uh, 175 milliliters of a 1.6 molar oh, and 1.0. That's all right. So if I take 0.175 milliliters oops, times 1.6 equals C2 times 1. Okay, I put both my, oops, I didn't mean liters. I put both my volumes in liters. And I find the second concentration of my solution to equal what? 0.28. That's what I have. Okay, we have to include that unit, which is a capital M, right, for molar. That's its concentration. Does it matter if I change the liters and milliliters? It does not matter. Did you get the same? Yep, it does not matter. As long as both sides are the same, both are milliliters or both are liters, you're fine. Okay, any other questions here? All right, let's try um, one more like this, then we're going to try a little bit more difficult one. So I need 
10 liters of a 1.2 molar solution. Sorry, my handwriting is just pretty bad today. Okay. What will the concentration be? If I oops, used only 2.5 liters of stock solution. Okay, so I used 2.5 liters of my stock solution to make 10 liters of a 1.2 molar solution. Okay, so basically we're trying to find the concentration of our stock solution here. Should it be higher or lower than our diluted solution? <coughs> it should be higher. It doesn't really matter if you put the initial or the final on either side. It doesn't make a huge difference either way. Okay? But if you want to be consistent, always put the uh, before on the left and after on the right. So technically mine can be switched. But it doesn't really make a difference. When we solve for the final concentration, we already said it should be larger than our initial concentration. And what did you get, Andy? What did you get? Perfect. What's our units? Molar. Molar. M with a point, yes, capital M. How did you get that? Um, I took, multiplied these two together. 10 times 1.2. Wait a minute, why is, the, why is the 10 over on the right side? Shouldn't it be on the left? Uh, you think they should be switched sides, you mean? Yeah. I, I, this is what I need. This is my final right here. I need 10 liters of a solution that has that concentration. And I want to find the, I want to find the concentration of this amount. They could switch sides. 10, point, 10 times 1.2 could be on the right side, and they could, it could look flip-flopped. It doesn't matter what you put on the left and what no, you put on the right. No, what I mean is the 2.5 the stock solution, uh -huh. shouldn't that then be the one where the concentration is known because then... No, here we're going to find the concentration of our stock solution. So we want to end up with a diluted solution that's 10 liters, 10 liters of volume, uh, that has a concentration of 1.2 molar. So we're going to use 2.5 liters of our stock solution, and that's going to let us find out how, what's the concentration of our stock solution, which is 4.8. Any other questions here? All right, we're going to try one that just takes a little bit step further, a little bit more difficult. Okay, so let me get it written out here. Oops, oops, oops. This is a 5 molar solution. I didn't write that in there. How many milliliters of a 5 molar copper sulfate solution must be added to 160 milliliters of water to
Okay, so this one is, is not just quite as simple as C1, V1 equals C2, V2. It takes just a little bit step further. Um, can anyone tell me where, where's the clue in this problem that's going to tell us it needs to be taken a little step further? And it's kind of difficult to pick up, but there's a clue in here. Added to 160 milliliters of water. So it's not asked, telling us what our final volume might be. It's saying we're adding it to this much uh, water. So we have a stock solution. We don't know how much we need to add to it, but we know we have to have 160 milliliters of water to add to our stock solution. Okay, so here's how we're going to set this up. We're going to start with C1 times V1 equals C2 times V2. We want to find the, the volume needed of our stock solution. We don't know the final volume of our final solution yet, okay, but we want to know volume of our stock solution that we need. So what's the concentration of our stock solution? 5.0. And we don't know this yet. We're solving for volume of that stock solution. We, want, we know the concentration we want our final solution to be at, which is 0 0.30 molar. And we know the final volume of our final solution is going to be 160 milliliters of water plus whatever we added from our stock solution, right? Okay, so we're going to say 160 milliliters, we'll just keep it in milliliters, plus V1. Because we don't know what volume of stock solution we're adding yet. Okay, are we on the same page here? Okay, yep. Oh, it didn't go up there. Okay, okay, okay. Still didn't go up there. Okay. Um, 